Today on The Spin, we're gonna talk about the different ways that influencer marketing companies are counting impressions. And I have a prop. My prop is a magazine, because magazines have been doing similar things on how they count readership for years and years. There are four ways to potentially count impressions that we see commonly, and I'm gonna go from the most sort of outlandish overstatement of impressions to the most conservative, actually, understatement of impressions, so you, you get all four of them. The first one is called Max Potential, and I think of it as Max Potential plus second generation, or Max Potential plus viral impressions. What that is doing is saying, okay, I have this magazine with a thousand subscribers, and we have some research that says the average subscriber gives this magazine to two other people, and therefore your ad will be seen by three million people. Now, if your ad's on page 95 in the back, you're obviously not gonna reach three million people because how many of those million subscribers actually read that issue, actually got to the page your ad is on, actually looked at your ad for more than a second, all those sorts of things bring that number down, but it's the way magazines have been counting for years and years. To me, in a digital age, that's a level of fiction. These viral impressions that they're counting, many of these are, if I saw the post and I liked or commented or otherwise engaged with it, now you're counting 100% of my audience too, seeing that engagement and being drawn back to the original content. It doesn't happen. It's a complete fiction. So max potential plus viral impressions dramatically overstates the amount of impressions that are being created by an influencer marketing company, you should be highly skeptical of that one. The second one is max potential impressions only. So again, I have a million subscribers, your ad will be seen by a million people. It's the same thing as saying, I have 10,000 Instagram followers, I have 20,000 Twitter followers, I have therefore 30,000 total followers. If I share something on those two channels, 30,000 people are going to see it. Clearly a fiction, clearly not true. But the nice part about Max Potential is at least it's apples to apples. I know then that you have 30,000, another influencer has 50,000, another influencer has 5,000, I can at least compare them, but there's no way everyone's seeing your ad on page 95 because of these Max Potential impressions. That is a very common way. The way we do it is what I like to think of as a balanced portfolio. So at Carousel, we have the influencers share organically, and then we boost the highest performing content to reach your exact target audience. So what we're doing is we're counting the max potential reach for the organic impressions, and then we're counting the true views for the boosted impressions. So let me elaborate on that. The reason we count max potential for the influencer shares is because there's no other good way that treats all this content fairly. We have looked in the cases where we can see true views, and they range from two or three percent true views to 25% true views. And that varies based on the platform you're on, the content type, the influencer, even the piece of content. So you can't just set a rule that 10% are gonna see it or 3% or 50% are gonna see it because it's a miss. So we use max potential to keep that even. Then when we're boosting the content, it is very easy on all the common social platforms to get an advertising report for the true views of the boosted content. So we're mixing in only those people we can certify, guarantee have seen those pieces of content shared in front of them and we get this sort of balanced portfolio. Understating a little bit the true views, overstating a bit the max potential, but a conservative sort of fairly accurate-ish measurement of a number we can't otherwise get. The most conservative way to do this of all is to count only 100% true views or verified views of the content. The reason this is a bit of a mistake is because it undercounts everything. So you can use a company like Moat or even Facebook's own certification and other platforms to show you 100% of these people saw this content. The challenge here is you're using influencers in part because you wanna reach their audience. So if you're giving them basically no points for reaching their audience, it's a reasonable question why you're using influencer at all. So there are four ways of counting influencer content. When you talk to multiple influencer companies, you should be sure which one they're using so you can be sure of what you're actually getting at the end of the day. If you have any more questions about this, reach out anytime. I'm Jim at carousel.com. Until next time, I'm Jim Tobin. See you on the spin.